They say once the travel bug bites, there is no known antidote. But don't worry about me, because whether I venture far or near, you are always guaranteed to come along with me. The fun part about the journey is being able to make some stops or in my case to pick up one of the essential items I forgot when going on a trip. arrived at Twin Lake Safari Lodge and joining me today is the manager Nicholas. Um, you're going to give us a bit of a brief about the lodge and I guess what we're going to get up to while we're here, right? Floor is yours. Now, thank you so much for coming. It's our pleasure and honor to host you with your team. The name Twin Lake Safari Lodge originates from the two crater lakes, Katinda and Mulambi. We are named after those two crater lakes. Though in this area we have about 32 crater lakes, we have a chart in and it has the number and the information about the crater lakes. As you will observe, the rooms and the cottages are also named after those crater lakes. You will see names like Ukugute, Chivgera, Nyungu, so we are named after those crater lakes. The brief history about the lodge, the lodge is about nine years old in business. Though we have some old structures in this place, like this house where we have the front, or the reception and the dining and the restaurant, was built in 1948 by the British governors who were here, who had come under the government to manage the fisheries department. They were managing the two lakes, Lake Edward and Lake George. So they were staying at this site. have a number of cottages, we have about 11 cottages, but comfortably we can take in about 30 people. Because some cottages take, take two, two, they are twins or doubles, so we can host about 30 people. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. We are so excited to see what we can explore and we're definitely bringing you guys along with us. Thank you so much, Nicholas. Thank you.
here. The bed is made here. This is tr chamber made. <laughs> not, not China. Loving it. Loving. Loving. And when it's clear, as you see, the rain's old, but now it's hazy. It's hazy, yeah. yeah. Wow. There is a swamp in the middle of the park mm. called Chibona. Mm. If you try to be observant, you will see like something like you see. Is a forest, part of the forest, part of the forest in the middle. Is green, that light green? green. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's a swamp. Yeah. In terms of the animals and what you can see, are there certain parts? Of yes. Uh, the park where if you, you go for a game drive mm -hmm. and you are truly really want to see the lions, mm -hmm. you go to the part of the Kasin. Kasin. You drive through Katungru Bridge, then go to Kasin. Mm -hmm. But uh, elephants, if, if, anyway, oh, which, uh, whichever part, yeah, you will see the. How f how close do they get? Here, mm. no, here they come next to even to the road. Sometimes we see them even oh. across here. Oh, nice. Yes, once in a while we see them. You wake up in the morning, you see a herd of them here. You know. Oh wow! So I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of the cottage I'm staying at here at Twin Lake Safari Lodge. It is called Nkugute. Now, if you remember, each of the cottages are named after the different crater lakes in the area. So this particular one is in Kugute, which is um, a crater lake that's actually shaped in the shape of Africa. We kind of were a bit biased. We chose this room because we heard that the president had viewed this one. So we were like, hey, let's take it. Anyway, as soon as you walk in, you're probably wondering why you can see me clearly through there. The camera's walking in. It's because they have this sort of like tent style um, you know, door, not doors, what are these, like cover-ups. Um, because I guess it gives you that feel of being in a room, but you're still outside. And so they kept the element of having a camping feel. Totally love that. So it's kind of like you're glamping, let's say glamping. So you do have a work desk like most um, hotel rooms. Love that they have um, some of the services that they offer in the little booklet, bottles of water, please don't mind the clutter love that they also are incorporating um local locally designed lamps you have this beautiful mosquito net i love mosquito nets they just make me feel very oh. especially the ones that just hang and drape across the whole bed it's very hotel very you're outdoors very there are mosquitoes here so you better be protected <laughs> so i like that i really like it it has a nice cute little cozy feel um Guys, I really love the side lamps. This stump of, of um, a lampshade stand is beautiful. Really like that. Um, they have some very, you know, simple side drawers, which are totally fine. I haven't had a little sit on the bed, see how comfortable. Oh, very comfortable, not too soft. I don't like very soft mattresses, but also not too hard. So a mattress like this is definitely good for your back. Um, love again the details they've chosen to accent with these prints of the cushions and the, the bed runner on the end really like that and um, they have this open brick wall design over here really like that still giving you a feel that you're outdoors and it's still very like rustic cold like that I love the floral couch um, armchairs on the side and they're very comfortable too guys just a side note um, they've decided to put in a little bit of photography of the crater lakes really like that and then come on in here Let's go check out the bathroom. We have already checked in so our luggage is in here So love the bathroom you have the his and hers sink of course, you know, you gotta have his and hers um, Nice detail of the lampshades which have zebra and giraffe Again, giving us a touch. I remember you're in the wild, you're overlooking a national park. Everything seems very intentional in here. Very intentional, just reminding you where you are, but still giving you the sense that they're paying attention to detail and they're still making you feel like, you know, you're, you're experiencing luxury in the wild. A nice uh, toilet. <laughs> Again, it's like an outdoor like plan. So it's just the toilet in the middle there. Again, who cares? It's just you and possibly someone that you're very comfortable with. Um, doors on either end, you have a nice shower. Now you may have seen that from some of the other cottages we viewed, they do have bathtubs as well. We chose this room, which I was totally fine with. I do love a good shower. Um, not here for too long, but yeah, so really great. Everything seems nice. I love the little detail of 
the floral at the top here small things guys just make everything extra cute and pretty and it goes really well with the paint job the color of the paint that we put um, over here so this is kind of like a blue a very light pale blue which i really like it, it complements that very well and then through here guys guess what you have more view turn around and you're back in the wild guys gorgeous overlooking the national park queen elizabeth national park it's so surreal that you have a view from there you can come out of the bathroom and come out straight to this um, and then where i'm standing right now is a deck which is sort of like your veranda area they've put over here a nice little sofa um, again locally made i love locally made stuff shows up they're supporting local um, craftsmen here as well and this cushion oh, perfect cozy nice the only thing i'd say is of course it does block your view just a little bit when you're sitting down here but it's i mean really that's a minor that's not even a complaint that's just something to do with my height <laughs> okay so that brings us to the end of my tour of this cottage Okay, so what do you have for lunch today? Some Italiano spaghetti pasta. Or you're gonna get the grilled chicken, which is what I always go for. Chicken, spaghetti, chicken. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm a tourist guide at Irungu Safari Boat uh, that will always take uh, clients along the Kazinga Channel. I have been a guide here at Irungu Safari Boat. It has, it's now three years. Uh, we don't stop taking clients here only at the channel. We also over, offer other services like uh, the game drives. I take people, our clients in the game drives. Uh, our, our boats majorly operate on the channel, whereby we always uh, take visitors, and the, our cruise always takes uh, two hours at the Kazinga channel. Uh, wherever we are on the cruise, expect to see different wildlife uh, species. Uh, we expect to see uh, wildlife animals like the elephants, the buffaloes, the hippo, the white hogs. Uh, we also spot the cats on a good day. Though the hippos, they are the animals that are dominating the channel. Okay. Uh, for the, uh, the side of the birds, uh, wherever we are in the channel, we expect to see birds like uh, the hammercops, uh, the kingfishers, the African uh, fish eagle, uh, the yellow billed stock, the black winged stilts, and the spar winged plovers, very many others. So we're finally experiencing this amazing boat ride. Look at these hippos. Bro, what's the deal? Is? Okay. So hippos cool in the day and then they come out in the evening. Yeah, right? hippo are nocturnal animals. Uh, how deep is this water then? 
Uh, the channel is eight meters deep. Eight meters, okay. Yeah, but uh, when you're measuring, you find that eight meters are in the middle of the channel. When so you keep coming up, you find like four, three, two meters. So whenever you find such a, a buffalo, take yes. it in mind that it's a loser. Oh. It's a loser. So is it, is it dangerous? It, yeah, it's a loser and wherever it's alone, it's always aggressive. Yeah. Being a loser, it should have pushed out of the herd. So it likes staying uh, on the shores because uh, it feeds much on the eggs of both birds and crocodiles. So that's why you always keep around there. Guys, this boat experience has been such a dream. It's been so relaxing. We're watching the sun go down. Oh, everything about this has been great. I've got to see elephants in a way that I've never seen before in Uganda. Um, the team of the captain, um, our tour guide, they've both been so fantastic. It's been amazing tour guides. This is definitely something you want to try out if you're staying at the Twin Lakes Safari Lodge. So right now we're gonna head back and um, get ready for the evening. Hopefully catch the rest of the sunset by the time we get back. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm just going to continue drifting into my thoughts as we close this boat ride. Hey guys, thank you for coming. It has been nice to be with you. Uh, we have been using the services of a Rungo Safari boat. So guys, we finally made it to the Twin Lakes, just about five minutes from the Twin Lakes Safari Lodge. And behind us is this gorgeous view of Katinda and Murambi, the two lakes that Nicholas is going to tell us a little bit about. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome to the Twin Lakes. And we, the Twin Lakes Safari Lodge is named after these two greater lakes, Katinda and Murambi. Katinda and Murambi, we know them as a, a, a woman and a man lakes. They are called love lakes. So which one is the woman and which one is the man? Patinda is the woman. Okay. Mulambi is the man. Even okay. if you see, you can try to see them. You can see the shape of the Katinda, the heart. So, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. The Katinda. Okay. So, oh, like a love heart. Yes. Yo, do you see that? Okay. Now, now I get it. Okay. So it's a love heart, and then this is. The man. And when it, you see, 
again you can see the woman and the man making love you know you can see that uh, okay <laughs> we might have to see that with the drone <laughs> but okay so this is this is gorgeous and i can see that it's so untouched as well it doesn't look like people have done too much around it yeah and how how long have these lakes been here has has any sort of like um I don't know, has anything affected it? Has nature affected it? Have they decreased in size over the years? Have they always been this size? No, they have been the same size. Only that people were trying to do a bit of grazing and cultivation to cause erosion to the lakes and the government came in and tried to stop them. Okay, to preserve, them. To preserve the lakes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is beautiful. Five minutes from the, the lodge, right? Yes, right. So close, you can actually hike up here. We decided to drive. It was a great, beautiful, sunny day. But might not be the best if it's rained and yeah, the roads are. Rain and you can't walk, you can't come to this side of yeah. the lakes. But yeah. sometimes we do a walk through here, the other side of the lakes. Oh, to we have more time in the evenings to yeah. take hikes through. To walk around. Yeah. So it's possible to do a whole yes. loop around the, yes. the lakes. Yeah, yeah. See, the local people here come and do a bit of fishing. Local fishing, they come with their canoes and get fish. They yeah, fish here. so there's yeah, fish here. Small trap here. Small tilapia. Yeah. Okay, nice. So do you guys get some of your fish from here? Or mm, not one no? of these lakes, but we get around the other lakes, which have a big, big size. Of bigger fish. size, bigger body. Okay, thank you so much, Nicholas. There you have it. You can experience coming to see these beautiful Twin Lakes if you stay at Twin Lakes Safari Lodge. I feel like I'm going, I'm going to say Twin Lakes 10 million times I, by the time I've left this trip. Thank you, thank you so much. You're Guys, let's have a closer look. Come on. So beautiful. It's so green, it's so, it's so peaceful. All you hear is just the birds chirping. It's so peaceful, so peaceful. Hey, well, I think we're gonna set up over here, Anita and I, and have a little picnic of sorts. Um, and enjoy this view just for a little bit longer before we're back to the hustle and bustle of Kampala. All right, guys, see you in a bit. Oh the yeah, tiniest. yeah. Oh, there, there, there's two. <gasps> there are many. See, oh, there's three. Oh, it's a whole family. Yeah, I think so. Then there's that, that one that has like, on top of it. Yeah, on the whoa, tree. Whoa, 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 whoa. So yeah, like <laughs> a little branch. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anita, tell me a little bit about what you think of this view. I think this view is really. Perfect location for yeah. lodges to and set like up. And create like a cute little picnic-y. Yeah. We can show them how to do that. Should we show them? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's do that. We're finally settled for our beautiful picnic. The pink is provided by Miss Beryl. Seriously? They all know. If you've been watching my channel, cheers, then you know that Anita is obsessed with pink. Hmm. Pink is life. Pink is life. Today yeah. it has brought life. So much life. Um, so we're going to enjoy this picnic while we have a look at the beautiful lakes. Safari Lodge organized for us to visit the Katara Women's Handcraft Center um, and so we're gonna go in and visit and see what they do over here and hopefully learn something new today yeah and it's perfect that I'm doing it with my girl Anita Beryl 
Um, definitely we knew handcraft. handcraft. <laughs> we were in, we were sold immediately. So let's go in and meet the women here and see what they're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tell us a bit about what you do here. So here we do conservation activities. Mm. At the same time, uh, we promote community tourism. Mm. By promoting community tourism, we do elephant dung paper making. Out of elephant dung paper making, we make products which we sell to the tourists. Okay. Uh, we also make uh, handicrafts as a community tourism activities. We these handicrafts are done by women in this community mm. as a way of improving their household income. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. And how long? Then uh, mm -hmm. we also do a uh, coffee experience. Mm -hmm. We do coffee experience here. We do coffee roasting. Mm -hmm. We pack coffee roasted beans and coffee powder. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. And how long have you been doing this for? Um, now it is 16 years because we started wow. in two, 2005. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is elephant dung. Yes, so you have something about the conservation of elephants. Is yes, that your yes. main? That's that's why we 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 use elephant dam mm. as a way of reducing extinction of elephants around here, Queen Elizabeth National Park. Okay. Because uh, our community borders with Queen Elizabeth National Park, mm. we have a lot of challenge. Uh, we always face a lot of challenges with elephants. Mm. Every growing season, elephants they penetrate. They uh, they come from Queen Elizabeth, yeah. then they des destroy all the crops which are grown by the communities. Mm. So after destroying communities, they are so hungry because of losing their crops. They started poisoning elephants and others. They oh. kill elephants to get ivory for sale as an income generating activity. Yeah. So as an, as an organization, we look away on how we can save these elephants from being poisoned, from being killed. Mm. So we use we started using elephant dung as an intervention mm. of protecting elephants, both sides. Mm. So how are we using this elephant dung? You know, when these elephants coming and destroy, they drop the dung in our gardens. Mm. After dropping the dung in our gardens, we tell these communities, instead of being too annoyed and killing or poisoning, <laughs> we tell them to collect the dung bring it to us, then for us, we gave them some small amount of money as a compensation. Oh, okay. Because the park does not compensate for yeah. the crops which are destroyed by the elephants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we talk now, they are no longer poisoning, they are no longer killing, because even though they sleep there, mm. but they don't poison. They sleep guarding elephants, mm. at the same time guarding their crops. But mm. they don't poison, they don't kill. Okay. But sometimes, elephants come in a huge family and chase them. They have mm. to run away. Mm. After running away, all the elephants from Queen Elizabeth, they have to come and destroy. Mm. After destroying, in the morning hours, people, they come and collect the dung and bring it to us, then we compensate. Okay. That's how we do. Okay. We trained all the women in this community. Then after training them, we gave them materials. Mm. After giving them uh, materials, some they went from here, some they went from their home. Then after making the after making the crafts, they bring the finished one for sale. Yeah. Oh, these little ones are cute too. Let me get maybe a set. A little yeah. mommy and her baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll take these support. Yeah. I love elephants. You guys can see okay. I have an elephant chain. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so this is our church on the vision. Mm. This is our governing structure. This is a management committee. This is these are our activities we do here. Mm. Uh, this one are uh, conservation activities, and we have uh, tourism activities. Mm -hmm. They are different. And this one is a list of members. They are more than because we are eighty members. Oh, you're eighty. Okay. Eighty members, sixty oh women, uh, fifteen female youth, and five men. The majority oh. are women because yes. it's a women's group. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 women. Yeah. Now, yeah. you see, the management is here. Yeah. The chairperson is here. Yes. Vice is a woman. Yes. I'm there as a secretary. <laughs> so I'm only one, one person. One man supporting them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> okay, that's very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting us, I showing us what you do. <laughs> so cute. My auntie was so obsessed with elephants, so we keep elephants. We are at Dave the Caves ecotourism campsite and we're going to go have a tour of the caves. So I'll probably give you an explanation that won't be as clear as our guide today. So let's go meet him and he's going to let us know what we are going to get up to. We need some sticks uh, because the place is it's not so sloppy. Okay. But it gives us support when we are sloping down and can I hiking see, up. Can I have a nice one? Yes, you can choose for yourself. <laughs> what a tourist. Okay. Wow. My name is Joel, a tour guide at Dave the Cave. And uh, I'm happy for your visit today. Thank you. And very happy for the video you're taking. And we are going for a cave visit. Okay. Which will take us uh, 20 minutes uh, for the history about the cave and the history that happened long time ago. And the cave is called in Nyanziviri, in Dev the Cave's place. Uh, all we are going to express from the cave. I'm very happy for your visit. So let's go. So, um, Joel, how long have you been doing these tours for? Uh, I've been a tour guide for three years. For three years? Yes. Okay, nice. Hmm. I've worked in Mponi Community Camp. Okay. That is the Resort Mountain National Park. Okay. I worked with Kibale Cultural Tourism Campsite. Okay. That is in Chivale Kamwenge. Okay. I worked with Forest Hawks Safari Lodge in Queen Elizabeth National Park. Then finally, I'm here at Dave the Cave. Dave the Cave, okay. Yes. Nice. So we're in good hands. <laughs> so how big are these caves? Or how deep, I guess? Uh, the cave is not so deep. Okay. It's on a uh, slant level or sea level. Slanted. Uh, only that um, there's water, a stream of water passing through it. Okay, nice. But uh, it's not so big. And wow. Look at that. Yes. So this is our entry. And this will be our exit. Okay. Yeah, this the, the way when we're coming back. Yeah, we are coming. We, when we are coming back, we are using this. this place. But when we are floating, we are going to use this. Okay. So when I was giving you my introduction, yes. I told you that uh, the place is also called in Yanzibi. Yes. Uh, this means that uh, we are between two lakes. Okay. And this is Lake Kamweru. Mm -hmm. uh, in that depression where you can see a motorcycle climbing, there's another lake in that depression it's called Lake Chema, the Chema. first lake you saw. Yes. Kamweru means a uh, plant of fertility and Chema means a group of, of hippopotamuses. Oh. So uh, that lake had hippopotamuses but the farmer, the hunters had to kill everything and they went into uh, more, no more existence. Okay. And the lake is 52 meters deep, Lake Kamweru. It has got some fish species whereby we get uh, lungfish, mm -hmm. we get tilapia, and we also get um, mudfish. So there are no snakes here? No, there are no snakes around. So the place is naturally at nature. Oh. I hear water streaming. So this is um, water coming from where? Yes, the water is coming from Swamp Zukutu. Swamp Zugutu. Yeah, okay. I think when you're sloping this side, you saw something like a swamp, uh, a swamp this side. Yeah. It was a green, 
wetland this side. So that's where the water is coming, coming from. from. So the stream of water passing through the cave is called Stum Zunkutu mm -hmm. because it's generating from Swamp Zukutu. And it's believed that Swamp Zukutu was a lake before, but it's a dead lake. What do I mean by a dead lake? Now, like this Kamweru drying up and forming up what? A swamp. So those are different streams or meanders or whatever they're called. Yes, so the, the river is an underground river. We, are, we only have chance to see it because it is passing through an open place which is the cave. I've learned so much. I feel like I've had a geography class, I have a history, everything. Everything. I've learned so much already. Joel, yes. you're fantastic. Oh, thank you. My knees are dead. Hello, thank you, Lucy. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I, oh. huh. Okay. Why did you go in, in, in all the way? Uh, we are going to start with the cultural or oh, the historical background of the cave. It's believed that the first people who stayed around the cave were people from Burundi. Geographically, the cave was formed as a result of volcanicity. Mm. After the earth eruption, that caused the depression where Lake Kamweru is situated. And you know when volcanism occurs, splash of magma must, must occur. So when magma splashed to this side, it solidified to this level, leaving a free space, forming a what? Forming a cave. Mm. You can see some sedimentary rocks as a result of of volcanicity. And geographically, stream Zukutu passing through the cave is an underground river generating from Swamp Zukutu passing through the cave, pouring to Lake Kamweru. And I earlier told you that it does not stay in Kamweru. It continues underground, it has an outlet, it connects to Lake to River Rakibale in Chambura. Then Chambura connects to Chambura Gorge, then it pours its water to Lake Edward. Thank you so much, Joel. Welcome. This Welcome. has been so informative. We've learned so much. All right, guys, so this brings us to the end of our tour at Dave the Caves Eco Lodge. Um, it has been so informative. Joel has taught us so much about the history behind the caves, how it was discovered from the Burundi settlers. Um, very informative stuff and honestly a huge thank you to Twin Lakes Safari Lodge for organizing this because I'm not sure I would have known about these caves. Um, but I also, I mean people even camp in here. That was also an extra fascinating point. Using banana stems after cutting down the banana. Yeah, I know them. Then they fix uh, the marana stems together. What you call local here in Kogu. When you see them sailing on top, you don't have boats. But how long do they last? Then you have to make a new project. Oh, let's hurry. It's coming to rain. Really? Yes, yes, let's go. Oh, it's okay. coming to rain. Yeah, we go up there. Oh my gosh, let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. Ah. Oh my gosh. 
Cheers to that. We're doing the museum. Are you sure? You can see the first hole. Mm. You can see uh, horns for communication. You can see this was used as a, a trap. Uh, you can see these calabasses. Yes. Uh, we are using food, milk, uh, drinks, and yeah. other. Okay. So you can just walk through. So apparently this is where the men used to stay. On the right is where children, the children's bedroom would be. And the back here is where the kitchen would be. Um, you have a bedroom here, which is like the main master bedroom. And then in the back here in the corner, what is this? A yes, store? Uh, oh, like, oh, this is where you place all the food stuff. Okay, nice. And then you got some instruments. I don't know if I can watch this. My name is Lucy. Yeah, I like to tour. Yeah, and thank you, Dave. Yeah, for showing us the caves. Uh. This has, um, as you can see, we've gone up hills. We've climbed up to the Twin Lakes. We've gone into valleys. We've come out. The car is still standing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Europe Car and Intercar. Why do all good things come to an end? Whether it's the people you meet, the places you stay, or the culture you experience, visiting Twin Lakes Safari Lodge was definitely one for the books.